I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, July 11th, 2013. The Jewish Week reports that the Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany voted yesterday to form a new commission to review the organization's management and specifically how it overlooked an early sign of a massive fraud scheme. This special planning commission will be comprised of board members, qualified people from outside the organization, and Holocaust survivors. As we reported to you earlier this week, a report was released on Sunday on the 2001 fraud warning. However, only two of the four members of the committee tasked with that report said they stood by it. The other two resigned from the committee in protest. The 2001 warning was received by several officials at the claims conference, alerting them that employees at the New York Processing Center were putting through false claims for Holocaust restitution as part of a multi-million dollar fraud scheme. Those allegations were looked into but ultimately dismissed, and the fraud continued until it was discovered in 2009. President of the National Association of Jewish Child Holocaust Survivors and Secretary of the Holocaust Survivors Foundation USA, Leo Rector, commented that the fraud over the past 16 years is not an isolated incident, but a symptom of a larger institutional system that favored the claims conference hierarchy at the expense of survivors. Jewish Agency Chairman Natan Sharansky and World Jewish Congress President Ronald Lauder had each called on the claims conference to be reviewed by an independent committee earlier this week. Sharansky told the Jerusalem Post, For far too long there has been a gap between the tireless efforts of the claims conference on behalf of the Jewish people and the growing perception that the organization is run like a closed club, with little transparency or accountability in its decision-making process. The Times of Israel reports that the Prime Minister's office strongly denied reports today that Israel was considering releasing 40 Palestinian security prisoners as a gesture aimed at encouraging Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to return to peace talks. This follows a report from the Ma'ariv newspaper that had reported that based on, quote, sources in Washington, Prime Minister Netanyahu was willing to release the prisoners who had taken part in terror attacks, even without any Palestinian commitment to return to the negotiating table. A senior official in the prime minister's office who wished to remain anonymous told the Times of Israel, however, that the report has no basis in reality. A group of terror victims' families have launched a campaign to prevent the prime minister from agreeing to any such release, and they told Knesset Speaker Yuli Edelstein this week that the release of terrorists from prison is immoral and illegal. Outgoing Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Michael Oren, took a look back at his last four and a half years in Washington in an interview published today in Haaretz. In it, Oren addressed several issues, including the U.S.-Israel relationship and the relationship between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Barack Obama. Oren said during the Obama-Netanyahu era, there was a whole series of supposed crises, none of which was a genuine crisis, he said. The public atmosphere was one of tension, but behind the scenes, we worked together as allies. Oren further said that Obama is a true friend to Israel, and he disagrees with the view of some to the contrary. He noted the president's trip to Egypt in 2009 that made some Israelis uncomfortable. He explained that Obama tried to make peace with the Arab world. This was misunderstood in Israel because in Israel everything is measured on the basis of the sense of security and insecurity. And when an American president goes to Egypt and goes to Turkey and doesn't come to visit us, Oren said, it causes a sense of insecurity. Michael Oren steps down from his role as Israeli ambassador in September. He'll be replaced by Ron Dermer. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu broadcast a Ramadan message today to Israeli Arabs to mark the beginning of the Muslim Holy Month, which began on Tuesday. In it, the Prime Minister stressed the great importance of one of the core values of the state of Israel, and that is, he said, freedom of religion to worship for all citizens of the state. Netanyahu said that the Muslim community is an integral part of Israeli society and that he attaches great importance to their role and contribution to the economy and in all aspects of life in Israel. 
Netanyahu also extended his wishes to Muslims around the world. The prime minister mentioned the violent upheavals in various countries in the region and wished them peace. He said Israel continues to extend a hand of peace to its neighbors, both near and far. A delegation of Israeli high school students ranked eighth out of 80 participating countries in the International Computer Science Olympics competition, which took place this week in Australia. The delegation has been moving up in rank in the competition. Last year, they came in 17th place, 19th place in 2011, and 23rd in 2010. Prime Minister Netanyahu called the high school students today and complimented them on their success. He told them, you won the most important Olympics in my eyes. And finally today, attorney Matt Nassanchik is set to become the new Jewish liaison for the White House. Nassanchik was involved in advancing the Obama administration's gay rights policies. He was a top staffer in the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division and oversaw the implementation of the Matthew Shepard Hate Crimes Act in 2009 that expanded hate crimes to include those motivated by gender, gender identification, and disability. Since 2012, he has worked at the Department of Homeland Security. Nassanchik replaces Zach Kelly, who took over the position on an interim basis, when Jared Bernstein stepped down in January. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, July the 11th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.